Hi, this is Paul Neal from Pen Productions. Uh, I've had uh, recently a few questions on how to place hair cards for uh, you know doing hair type uh, setups. This is usually for games and whatnot where you need cards. I'm not going to show how to make them in this video. It's just a quick one on showing how to place them easier using the placement tool. So we're going to pretend this is our head for now, uh, nice and simple. I'm going to go and make um, a new uh, hair card and uh, just set that up. So this is going to represent um, a card. Now we want to get our pivot in the right, spl right place. And, uh, and our object kind of rotated in the, in the right uh, location. So I'm going to start off with um, effect pivot only and just move it back. Again, you can snap it over to the vert if you want. Uh, I might even leave it in a little bit just so that this edge kind of buries in a bit more or something. Uh, I'm going to say effect object only at this point. I want to tilt it up a little bit so that it automatically is going to stay off the surface nicely and, and, uh, and kind of be off the surface. Um, at this point, too, I could also go in and add uh, something like a bend modifier. If I wanted to bend it a little bit, um, I could uh, go in and uh, get it to bend. Set that to 90. I could bend it out or bend it in, however I want to get them to sort of flex and whatnot. And I might just leave that bend modifier on there for now um, so that I can actually adjust those later uh, really easily and, and sort of tweak them. For that fact, I could add another bend modifier underneath. And again, let's just turn this up and let's just curve that a little bit and get it to uh, curve onto the surface a bit more. So the bottom one's going to curve it side to side. The top one's going to curve it this way. And we can call that a piece of hair for now. And again, well, you might want to make a bunch of different ones, different size ones and everything. So the best way to go about doing this is to go and use the placement tool. And if I right click on it, it's going to open up this um, extra tool set here. Now one of the uh, things you want to turn on right away is auto parent. Auto parent's going to uh, parent it up to the object if you want it to get parented to it. Now in a lot of these rigs, you're actually going to probably have to skin them in or something else. But in this case, it's going to um, uh, parent them onto it. So at least if you move the head around or whatever, you can uh, the uh, um, hair will actually flow along with it and, and move with it. So from here, all we have to do is just simply use the placement tool. I'm just going to copy one of them just by holding down shift and copy it out and place it onto my, uh, onto my face. And then we can rotate it. And you can either just go to your rotate tool in local mode and, uh, and say, well, I'm just going to rotate it and, and rotate it in place. But there's actually a rotate mode built into, um, into it where you can just rotate it as you want. And that toggles on and off. So when you actually hit your uh, E key, instead of flicking it over to the rotate mode, it actually toggles on and off uh, the rotate in the, uh, in the tool, which is nice. So it's really simple now to be able to just simply go in and grab and place and just keep going through this. And you'll find that it's very, very easy to be able to place your, your, uh, your hairs or where you need them and uh, and have them working. Now, if you notice, it's also going to snap onto itself. So the best to thing to do is start at the base and work your way up so that you're not having this problem of hairs snapping onto other hairs effectively. So we want to be able to have that, you know, probably going up this way. So again, I'm just going to rotate that a little bit and turn off my rotate, just keep dropping in new ones. And then you're going to want to have uh, variations of a theme um, to be able to hook in to where you need them and start working with those. But the uh, rotate tool and whatnot is uh, really nice because it makes it very, very easy just to be able to go in and tweak out and, uh, and change the shape of them. Now the bend tools right now has all been instanced. So as we're creating this, it's actually instancing them. So I can go in now and change all of them at once in this set that I was working on. So if I want to go back and, and change that up, I'd have to make a in new instance of it and have another set possibly. So I could create a batch of them that all get instanced with this bend modifier. And of course the second bend modifier, which I could go in and adjust now and get it to uh, look the way I want. Now another way to uh, another thing to add possibly would be um, I want to go down to the bottom here and I want to go and add a taper. And if you had a taper modifier, you could get it so that we could taper this. I just find the correct axis. There we go. And we could even spread them out if we like, just with a taper modifier and do them all at once. And again, you can see I'm doing it down below the bend. You could do it above the bend if you wanted. 
and you get a slightly different result. But the idea being is, is I can use a couple of modifiers now, all instanced together, and be able to control how those um, hairs are working. Again, I could uh, easily grab bottom and say X form and drop in an X form modifier. And in the X form modifier, I can use it as a scale. So into the um, gizmo level and into my scale tool in local mode and grab that local axis and just scale them all up and down if I like. So I could make them a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, whatever it is. So the, it just makes your life much easier if you're working with a couple of instance modifiers to work on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and say, well, let's start another pack of hair. So I'm going to grab this one again, just make a copy of it. And when we go back in now and start making instances of it, I have my uh, rotate mode still on, I can rotate that. This one's a new instance now, and you can see it's only affecting this one. So I can start with little groups of hair, and if I want to make it real easy, give them a color of some, si uh, some sort so I can see which group is which as I'm going and say, well, okay, I know all the green ones that I'm dropping out here are this one group that um, if I adjust or tweak, it's going to adjust and tweak um, that specific one. So there you go. There's a, a really, really quick way of dealing with um, placing um, you know, hair cards onto it. Now, if you are wondering, effectively, this is how bird brain works uh, that my tool set for doing uh, bird feathers, except it's all automated through brushes and Macs uh, with a whole lot of coating and dealing with thousands of these and being able to comb them. But effectively, it's the same sort of methodology that's being used. Um, I'm just not, I'm doing the math myself. There you go.